Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you uh, Miss M Melissa O'Neill. I love that name. It's a royal name from Tyrone, even though I'm a dairy man. And uh, she's from Brough, County Limerick, originally. She now loves, lives in South Kilkenny, right on the border with Waterford. A great hurling family. Her nephew, she keeps on telling me, is the winner of, is it three or four? Four All-Stars. My God, that guy's got four more than I do. Uh, <laughs> She was a Sinn Féin councillor, she topped the poll there in Letterkenny Council. She's very, very experienced in her political work. She's a great steady influence and we rely on her experience and knowledge very much within the party. Ladies and gentlemen, Melissa O'Neill, Bula Boss. I'm not sure how I can follow that, <laughs> Dr. Carl. Thank you very much for giving us all hope here in Ireland. Today is the 10th of September. Here in Ireland, that's Youth Suicide Prevention Day. I am here today to support the sons and the daughters of ERA that have been destroyed by this government over the last number of years. I just want to give you some statistics that you might not be aware of that our children are suffering here under this government that do not care for their young. So teen suicides were the highest in the EU, in Ireland, pre-COVID. In the whole of the EU, Ireland had the highest teen suicides. Since COVID, that has been risen by 42%. These are our children we are talking about. At the moment, one in three by the age of 13 and one in two by the age of 24 are likely to experience a mental health disorder. I find this frightening that our children are not being minded. And a special message to the teenagers, our sons and daughters of ERA. It is okay not to be okay and please reach out to us, reach out to your families, your communities. We are here. We are here to look after you. Not these people. These people will pull you out of the river, but they're not going to be there to support you with services, mental health services, sexual abuse services that are wiped off. So many Garda, um, you know, I've just seen so many that have just been buried. Sexual abuse in this country has to be a priority. Um, so sorry, just to come back there, to Regi Regina Doherty came out recently. Regina Doherty is a Fine Gael TD that was literally booted out of here for illegal carry-on with identity cards in this country that was investigated and was found to be in breach of our GDPR. Regina Doherty then got in a back door, like all snakes do, in a back door and is now sitting on the Senate. Like so Regina has come out recently, out of nowhere, she was, as I said, kicked out of here by the Irish people. And she has said now that there's nine genders. Do you not think that these statistics of our children's mental disorders is enough for them to handle, Regina Doherty, than put nine genders on top of them? Now I just want to give us a bit of history. Because, again, this year we have seen Michal, Coveney and Leo, you know, fighting over who Michael Collins belonged to. Michael Collins belonged to the Irish people. They spent millions down in Cork making a special platform for themselves, keeping the people as far away as possible. And congratulations to all our freedom warriors that booed Michal Station, Michal Martin, off the stage. And let's go back to the centenary. And as an on air in standing here, I find it absolutely frightening that not one of those gangsters in there brought up the centenary convention that happened 100 years ago, February, of the Comanaban Convention against the Anglo-Irish Treaty. No one has mentioned the women of Ireland and the common man 
no one in this centenary year. They fought in the, the 1916 rising. They fought in the independence. And then De Valera said, women have no merit in politics. Well, I say move over, Hall Martin, because the Manola Aaron are here. At that convention, there were 600 women showed up. At that time, and this is very important, one of the most important messages I want to send out to people today. At that time, women in 1921 could not have a vote till they were over 30 years of age, had property or part of a university. That was only 100 years ago that women did not have that vote in this country. And for 700 years, the suffragettes all fought. They actually did hunger strike, beatings in jails, way before the 1916, the Manona Aaron did. And we, not one member of this parliament has mentioned them all year. And that is because at that convention, 419 women voted against the Anglo-Irish Treaty. That's why they weren't mentioned. So this was our civil war, and it reminds me very much of doing the research, and the main words that came out was, it was brother against brother, and sister against sister. Can we not all feel that now, in the last two years, where they turned family members against you, partners against you for standing up for your freedom of speech? So it was 1922, literally 100 years ago, when women actually got an equal vote with men in Ireland. And at that stage, 98 women were elected to this stall. Outside of the rest of them saying they had no merit to be there. This is something where I really need to hit home. There is 5.1 million of population in this country. We take away the under 18s. There's less than 2 million on a register and about 10% of them are deceased. Now, there's people out there telling you to deregister. I am saying, take our register back, clean it up and get every single member of Ireland on that register and take back Gangster House. Now, it's our, unfortunately, I did leave my notes at home. I just had a few to throw together there. But just standing here looking at you all, and this young man who travelled from Donegal, all the way from Donegal today, we must reach out and mind our young people. They are going into colleges. I'm a mother of an 18-year-old. I asked him about, you know, would, would you like your friends being able to vote at 16? His answer was, God, ma'am, we don't know what pants to put on us, not to mind who to vote for at the age of 16. So the likes of Shane Fane are trying to shove a vote down to 16-year-olds that are not capable, but they want that. They want that weakness to take our children. And we will not allow that to happen. So again, just think of the children. And the UK have actually withdrawn the jab for the 5 to 11 year olds and these crowds are still trying to give our children an experimental drug where there is no data on what's going to happen later and we all know we've seen it the reports are coming out protect the children of era 